Hi friends, uh, welcome uh, back to Coffee with uh, Ravi. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, I take to heart is the encouragement that you have uh, given me in person uh, whenever you see me. So this keeps me going and I appreciate that and thank you all for that. A common question that I get asked, uh, which I also want to uh, get people to think about is what are red flag symptoms, you know, in other words, uh, or even signs. So what's a symptom? A symptom is something that uh, patients describe. And uh, what I wanted to talk to you about is red flag symptoms in gastroenterology. A symptom is a sign that could be indicative of something more serious and should flag attention. Obviously, we don't want to wait till the symptoms. We want to do things that are proactive, uh, preventative, like screening colonoscopies, routine physicals, routine blood work. But then if things progress, here are things you may need to watch because if you can pick things up, whether it's cancer diagnosis or other diseases, there may be quality of life savings as well as even longevity aspects if some of these things are detected. These are hard too because sometimes there's an overlap, sometimes the way we perceive our symptoms is also hard, uh, dependent on our emotional state, but these are things that you should be looking for. If there is unintentional weight loss, and most times um, weight is a is a function of energy balance, you know, most times it means that we're not eating enough and that's what causes weight loss. Um, you know, uh, it's usually not a function of us burning up energy, but it's usually us not consuming enough energy. But what's causing that? Many of us sometimes feel uh, not well, and that leads to uh, decreased consumption. And we may uh, watch that in our loved ones and friends and family members. So that's one aspect. Any kind of abdominal discomfort or pain or belly pain that is new, Sometimes there is conditions where people have some minor bloating, minor discomfort that they've lived with for a period of time. Certainly, I'm not saying we shouldn't pay attention to it, but certain, But if it's new onset, much more, and, and it's persistent going on for more than a few weeks, we need to kind of think about it. Anything that's related to swallowing, if there's trouble swallowing, uh, you've got to swallow extra hard, you've got trouble with uh, uh, when you take food or liquids down and you have discomfort, that needs attention. It could be indicative of underlying uh, inflammation, very rarely cancer. Sometimes the, the muzzle of the esophagus doesn't work. If there's ongoing any throwing up or nausea, that's never a normal symptom. It could be because of medications. It could be a host of things. Any blood in the stool, any blood in throwing up, going back to uh, bowel habit, if there's new onset diarrhea or new onset constipation, um, sometimes that indicates underlying inflammation, etc. Yellow jaundice in color of the skin changing, color of the eye changing, definitely that's an immediate red flag. And fatigue and weakness can be indicative of many things such as losing blood, anemia, not feeling well. One thing that I like to emphasize is that if you look at cancers in the body, you know, uh, as a whole, 30% of those cancers arise from the GI tract meaning uh, cancers in the stomach, esophagus, pancreas, liver, colon, small bowel, etc. And the reason this is so is that the digestive system uh, cells multiply and they're constantly regenerating. So anything that's constantly regenerating has a tendency to misfire or abnormality, genetic abnormalities to sneak in. So uh, cancer, all of these areas can be common. How does it present? Uh, you know, jaundice uh, can be uh, associated with liver and pancreas, unexplained weight loss. If you have discomfort, that's new onset, goes back to the previous symptoms. If there's a change in the stool, which has become a little paler or change in color, um, and then this aspect of diabetes that's new onset at a later age, always needs to be looked at because very rarely pancreatic cancer can present as new onset diabetes. Of course, they're all prone to metabolic problems and diabetes and metabolic, how our body is unable to digest glucose and how the blood sugar goes up can be from a whole host of things, including metabolic stuff, but certainly uh, very rarely cancer can present that way. Other symptoms that are of concern, uh, you know, uh, is, uh, if there is any kind of black stool, change in the color of stool, uh, that can be stuff that's bleeding in the stomach. You know, if the blood touches the stomach acid, it can become black. 
if there is a change in the way you are feeling heartburn, all of us have occasional heartburn, you know, depending on when we eat food or when we uh, eat something or a bigger meal uh, or you know, there's a sphincter here called lower esophageal sphincter and it relaxes with certain foods or eating too much or nowadays with the GLP-1 uh, agonist drugs like Ozempic and uh, Vigovi, the stomach doesn't empty the food. But in the absence of any of this, if this new change of heartburn, uh, along with weight loss, we need to think about uh, conditions such as Barrett's or esophageal cancer. Certainly if somebody has a family history uh, and there's some symptoms that come up, certainly that's of a concern. You know, if there's first degree relatives that have pancreatic cancer or colon cancer or esophageal cancer, those are things that we need to keep in mind. And most importantly, if there's any kind of low blood count that shows up, uh, on screening blood work, especially a type called microcytic anemia where the cells become smaller or the iron stores become lower, uh, we need to kind of uh, uh, jump on it. So really, I think if there's new worsening or change in symptoms, if there's blood, if the pain is not relieved and things are persisting, or if there's a persistent change in bowel habit, or there's a high risk setting such as family history, uh, of cancers or there's uh, other associated things that can make uh, one prone to cancer such as smoking and uh, uh, excessive alcohol intake. Those things together raise the risk uh, that you need to kind of bring it to the attention of your uh, physician or healthcare provider. One of the things that I try to put out is how to kind of for you to think about it. So that's how we are trying to help is by providing you these educational things in a way that you are able to take it and digest it and implement it in your life. Because earlier detection of any disease leads to better outcomes, whether it be cancer or non-cancer problems. We are here to help you interpret these symptoms and give a structural uh, assessment to it. And uh, uh, we can uh, definitely, uh, we are here as a resource uh, to call, uh, visit, talk to us. Uh, about evaluating these uh, signs and symptoms uh, uh, of any uh, what I'm calling red flags. So um, thank you uh, for joining me today.